Welcome to Africa Media Australia. My name is Clyde Solomon Sharadi, and today I have a guest uh, with me, and I will give him an opportunity to introduce himself. Uh, my name is Omar Farah. I am the uh, project officer of Horn of Freak Employment Training and Advocacy. All right. Uh, thanks very much, uh, Omar, for uh, coming to uh, Africa Media Australia. Tell us about uh, yourself. Uh, you've been in, in Australia for quite long, haven't you? Uh, I was here in Australia over the last 24 years. I came here 1988. Uh, I think it was June 27. Uh, and, and since then I was living in Melbourne, uh, except a few trips that I made to Africa, London, United Arab Emirates, uh, Malaysia and so on. But the rest of my life, so the rest of these years, yes. I was here in Melbourne, Australia. Take us back to when you arrived to, to Australia, 24 years ago. What sort of place did you, did you uh, find? It? Well, I, I remember when I, when Australia comes into my mind, I was actually in, in Saudi Arabia, Riyadh. And my brother, who was living at that time here in Australia, sent me the aerial view of Sydney. And then I show in the photo of the postcard card to my friends in, in, in Saudi Arabia. And they, they question whether this is really Australia or not, because at that time, uh, we didn't have any knowledge whatsoever, any experience about Australia and how it looks like. Actually, many people, they used to believe that there's nothing in Australia except the white who are chasing the black Aborigines, killing them, and, and doing whatever they wanted to them. That was the view that we had at that time. So, uh, and we didn't know the infrastructure, how the country looked like, the weather, you know, all the other things that we know today was not there at that time in our mind. All right, well, uh, <laughs> so you arrived, you find uh, a lot of white people all over the place, and uh, <laughs> yeah. were, were there many Africans at, at the time? Uh, no, no, very few. Uh, well, very few. Un unfortunately, at that time, we were very united. The, you know, the Nigerian, the Tanzanian, the Somalian, the South Africans, we were all Africans. Then, luckily or unluckily, fortunately or unfortunately, we started to become Somali, Tanzanian, Sudanese, blah, blah, blah. And we went back into our boxes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, that, that, that's very good. Um, tell us about uh, the project that uh, you, you, you run. It relates to employment. Uh, the project that I'm running is so much to do uh, about employment. Uh, I started working with a, a group called Clan. In, in Carlton, it is a uh, Carlton Local Agency Network. And first time uh, I did, I conducted a research about uh, the African men in the area, uh, because at that time there was a concern within the service providers in that area that there are very few men who are coming to the services. Mm -hmm. And no one knew about their needs, what they wanted, what kind of issues they have, and so on. So I'm given the responsibility to conduct some kind of research to find out their needs. The outcome of the research, um, among other things, shows that there are needs in the area of employment. And that's how I'm employed by them at that time. And since then, I was working with them, and our project have done many, many different uh, initiative to support and help the Africans, particularly the professionals, pro, the, the professionals who are looking for employment, training, and other uh, other needs such as work placement and so on. Mm. And uh, unemployment is quite serious uh, uh, in within African communities, specifically within uh, Horn of Africa sort of communities, and specifically for men in uh, those um, communities. Is, is, is that your, your feeling as well? Yes, that's true. Uh, and, and, well, it's according, that's what happened, in a matter of fact. I don't know why that's true, even though that has changed uh, over the last two, three years. Yeah. But before that, there were more women than men purely because I think the service providers work with more women and more children, and the right person, I think, according to their judgment and the rationale, is to employ women so they can support and work with the children and the women who are using their services. That's why you have more women in the service providers than men at the moment. 
but the the number is a little bit trying too much now. Okay, that's good. So there's there's been some uh, some genes. improvement, possibly yeah, so also because of your co your contribution as part of the project uh, into into identifying those needs. So I think in my my contribution is more or less in other areas than okay. the service providers. Okay. For example, the banks, the IB, IBM. Australian, Australian, so the corporate uh, both, world. The corporate world. Yes, it's more in that area than uh, the local services. Okay, is it true that uh, within so the Somali community, for instance, that unemployment, especially for young Somali, is quite high and probably over thirty percent? It's very high, uh, uh, and I think it's more to do with uh, with there are number of groups. For example, the older one who came here with some kind of uh, experience or qualifications, are having difficulties to access the jobs that are available. That's yes. one area. The other area is there are number of children, or number of youth who become dropouts, yes. uh, mainly because I believe they, they are impacted by the fact that their fathers and mothers who are qualified are not get the job. So they, they don't, they, th they seem not to continue the education mm. to get the jobs that they want. Mm. And there's a reluctance for them to move on and try and push to get jobs because they already make up their mind mm. and say, look, if my father or my uncle or my auntie who are qualified don't cannot get the jobs, why should I bother? Exactly. Why should I waste my time? Which is uh, quite a bit of a sort of poor attitude uh, in, in trying to find a job. It doesn't matter whether, obviously it plays on people's mind, but they should really continue to push because uh, if you don't push, then sometimes you, you don't get. I think it, pushing is very important. And yeah. I think anyone should do his or her best to yeah. knock every door, yes. every possibilities and check what's available for them. Yeah. But also we cannot deny that in fact we need encouragement yeah, when that's true. there's no encouragement when you see the others who are qualified who did their best to find the jobs are not getting the jobs then you are likely to give up and say look yeah. i don't i rather drive a taxi rather than going and applying jobs that's regardless true. of my qualification absolutely uh, there, there is that, that element that needs to be um, uh, reckoned with uh what's your reading of uh, how the somali Community uh, is is faring uh, since uh, oh, since you've been in Australia. Give us a bit of a description of that. I think uh, the Somalians are changing. Uh, there are emerging groups within the emerging groups. Uh, for those who came here when they were very young or born here, are now changing and getting used to the system. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you can imagine those who born here or those who came here when they were two years are able to adapt the system, are mm -hmm. able to interact and assimilate and integrate more compared to me or those who are of my age. Mm -hmm. So the things are changing. There are many people who are now getting jobs. The doors are not locked completely. Mm -hmm. They are open, but it's very narrow. Mm. And some people Can't are yes, yes. Some people, <laughs> some people are getting into the system, yes. uh, especially the young ones, especially those who graduate from the local universities, yes. those who speak the accent, those who know the culture, those who can, those who already learn how to overcome the kind of problems that we may be struggling. I mean, those who are of my age are struggling. Mm. So, the community is changing, and again, you know. Most of them are now, especially those who came here in the 90s, 92, 93, up to 2000, are trying to get to the system, are trying to adapt to the system and, 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 and push the borders and do as much as they can. More women are now working in, you know, in, 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 in aging or, or child care area than men. Mm. Uh, and that's a new development, a new progress. And that's also, right. yeah, And also that, that helps in a way the kind of conflict that used to, yeah, that used to have between men and women mm. when they were depending each other. Now everybody is doing his best. Everybody is making earning. Everybody is you know making some contribution to the family, and that also helps the family to live in a happy life. Actually, there's actually uh, quite a lot of women now that are employed in in the family daycare yes, business yes. and all that. That's booming, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. <laughs> it is. It is. How long will continue? I don't know. <laughs> so far, so good. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, sir. So, Omar Farah, I think I would really want to get you back again here to talk more about uh, the uh, realities within this, the Somali community, because it's one of the biggest community of Africans in Australia, the second biggest after the, yes. the, 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 the Sudanese. That's right. So, uh, and, and there's quite a few things that I would really want to uh, see you back uh, at AMA to, to talk more about that. Unfortunately, we're running out of time uh, today, but I'm just going to ask you one last uh, question. What's your overall message to the uh, young generations out there or to the rest of the African communities who are trying to find their place with all the negativity that is happening all, all around sometimes on the image of uh, Africans with your experience, the fact that you've been here for so long and what, what sort of message you know, do, you, do you want to give? I think the, ma the, the message that I would like to deliver or to pass to, to the community is mm. look, you are here in Australia, you belong here. Maybe you born or you came here when you were two years old or three years old. You are like any other Australian, mm -hmm. whether they come, whether they born in Melbourne or whether they born in Belfast or whether they born in London. Mm -hmm. As long as you are Australian and you are Australian, when it comes to either birth or adaptation, you are Australian and you have to do your best. Mm -hmm. And you have to understand that this country gave to you and many of you actually benefit from this country, gave to you what you need, and, and it's time for you to be back and accept the others and also expect the others to accept you. All right, uh, thank you very much. That's, that's very uh, uh, important. When can we see you back here? Maybe in, in a couple of weeks or so? I don't so? know, maybe one year after that. <laughs> <laughs>